In both age and structure, the Eiffel Tower has a lot in common with the 300-foot-high Kinzua Railroad Viaduct in Pennsylvania. It was a bridge that was wrought iron originally. It was reconstructed about the turn of the century in steel. And what happens here, of course, is that unless it's maintained, corrosion occurs. And what happens at the corrosion? The connection points freeze up. They are not allowed to move. And here are some pieces from that viaduct. You can see that there's corrosion all over the place. That's no longer steel. A structure with frozen connection points can't absorb the stress of high winds. Eventually, in this strong windstorm, it literally fell over. Section by section, piece by piece, it fell over into the valley where it had spanned the valley for over 100 years. Just not maintained. You can think of many uh, structures that are coming from that same era, like the Eiffel Tower. It's an iconic structure. That doesn't shield it from the fact that it's in a corrosive environment. And so in time, if you do not do anything for that structure, it will fail. And it will come down. Time between one and 300 years after people will likely be the era of the great collapses worldwide. In Seattle, the iconic Space Needle was designed to sway one inch for every 10 miles per hour of wind, but with its steel weakened by corrosion, it takes little more than a strong breeze for the symbol of the 1962 World's Fair to crash down from the skyline. When humans disappeared, sea levels were already on the rise. In Manhattan over the centuries, saturated soil around the Empire State Building's foundation pilings have allowed the building to lean. Once a building strays from the vertical, then gravity forces are also acting against the structure, increasing the stresses at the base of the building. Now, we're unlikely to see a skyscraper fall like a tree in the forest, but once it does start to incline, gravitational force will cause the top of the building to collapse downwards on top of itself. Decay has also overtaken the city of Chicago, the birthplace of the skyscraper. The Sears Tower, the tallest man-made building in North America, has reached the end of its reign. people has been an era of decay and destruction. Our concrete structures have lasted the longest. The ancient Romans invented the first form of concrete. And some of their structures remained intact for over 2,000 years. But modern concrete isn't nearly as durable. It has a higher water content and is more loosely packed, which leads to more air pockets and cracks. Modern concrete structures have another fatal flaw. Below the surface of reinforced concrete structures, there is a, a mesh of steel reinforcing bars. Uh, they don't corrode because the concrete maintains an alkaline environment around them. Now, when that alkalinity breaks down, as it will in time, then the steel will start to corrode. 
As the steel rebar rusts, it expands to three times its original volume, creating an outward pressure that causes the concrete to crumble. In very broad terms, after 50 years, we'd start to see surface cracking on concrete. After 100 years, flaking of the concrete surface. After maybe 500 years, most reinforced concrete structures will be gone. We look at these images of our fallen civilization. It helps us to identify with the past, with the Greeks and the Romans, with the crumbled mud brick cities of Ur. Each of us knows that our bodies are going to fall apart. Why not our cities too? A thousand years ago, six and a half billion people called this planet home. By the early 21st century, more than half of them lived in cities. Now, those cities are unrecognizable. After maybe a thousand years or so, the scene behind me would be very, very different. There'd be very little evidence of buildings, very little evidence of the activities of man. What we would see would be a jungle of vegetation. The future of cities in a life after people can be best imagined by looking to the past. This is Mineta Street in Greenwich Village. Most New Yorkers might come here and wonder why it curves like this. It curves because once upon a time there was a stream here, Mineta Brook. There were more than 40 streams on Manhattan Island. All flowing down and carrying the rainwater down to the sea. So what happens today? The rain falls, the snow melts, but it flows right along the street and down into that storm drain there. If there weren't people here anymore, there will be no one here to maintain the sidewalks and maintain the streets. They start to crumble up, they start to break apart. Trees will come back, vegetation will come back, and eventually the hydrological cycle would reestablish itself. And who knows, maybe Mineta Street might once again become Mineta Brook. Using historic maps and computer modeling, scientists with the Manhattan yes. Project are rediscovering what Manhattan Island looked like when explorer Henry Hudson first sailed around its shores in 1609. Here we are in Foley Square, the administrative center of New York City, and the location of the famous courthouse you see on TV. This place hasn't always had such colossal buildings and stony streets. Once upon a time, 400 years ago, the collect pond was here, the fresh water source for New York City, right behind me. There was a stream that drained down, to the Hudson River shore, another stream to the East River, and there was this beautiful pond that was nestled in an amphitheater of hills. So what would happen if all the people were to disappear? The buildings, they would tumble down. The soil would start to reform, trees would start to grow out of them. They would become the new hills, the new amphitheater around this place. Nature would reestablish itself and slowly bring this place back into the green heart of what it means to be here on planet Earth. New York City, like the rest of the planet, has changed radically. The transformation is most shocking in Times Square, as the once beating heart of the city is silenced by nature's onslaught. <laughs> 